welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tammy Bashore. And today I wanna to dive right into talking about the eight questions that I ask our breeder when we got our German short-haired pointer. We have two of them. One is seven and a half. The other will be five here in the next month. So they're about three years apart. They come from the same breeder, same bloodline, but they are very different in personality. If you've ever seen us over on Instagram, you know how very different my two pointers are. So diving right in, there are two questions that are the most important to us. Number one is, are they purebred? We wanna make sure that they're not crossed with anything because we want a 100% German shorthair pointer. Um, you can find crosses with Weimaraners, with labs, I think even with Beastless I've heard. Um, but for us, we just want a purebred GSP. And then the second question that's most important to us is how much do they cost? We don't have an unlimited budget. You can find pointers out there that are a few thousand dollars. We got our oldest for $600 and our youngest, I think we got for about three or 400. And I'll tell you why there was a difference here in just a little bit. Um, but the first two questions that I always ask is, are they purebred and how much do you want for that puppy? Um, then after I know that they are purebred and I know that they're in my budget, I'm gonna move on to my next set of questions. Question number three is, do you have males or females? In our case, I didn't care either way with our first one. Um, and we ended up with a male. That's all that they had left were males. And so that's what we took when we got our second one. Um, we also got a male with the second one. And I don't know if we had any reasoning to that other than that was what was available. We liked the coloring and ticking on him. And so that's the one that we picked again. Um, but if it matters to you, of course, you'll want to ask, do you have males or females available? They may not know yet. The puppies may not have been born. So that will also be something you'll want to make sure you know. Um, but if it matters to you, you'll always want to ask, do you have males or females? Because if you're looking for one or the other, they may not have what you're looking for. Then once I know what they have for puppies, I'm going to ask if I can see pictures of the parents. I want to know what the mother and the father looked like so that I can understand a little bit more about what my puppies are going to look like. If the puppies are already born, then I'm going to ask for questions of the puppies as well. So pictures is very important. I want to see what those parents look like so that I can see what potentially our dog may look like when they get older. And then pictures of the puppies if they're born um, so that I can see what I'm picking from. Some breeders will let you pick from pictures. Some they want you to come on site and take a look. But we picked ours from pictures for both of them. With Bentley, he was the only one that had any white left on him. The others that were available were solid brown. So for my first dog, I really wanted one that was liver and roan. And then for the second one, my husband wanted one with a little bit more solid brown on him. So we found the one that had the most solid brown and that's the one that we decided to pick for our second one. So seeing those pictures really helps. Our dogs came from North Dakota, so we couldn't go visit them in person. We did everything via email, which made it really easy. Um, but getting those pictures um, was super helpful. If the puppies are already born, um, then I'm gonna start looking at their different coloring. So you're gonna wanna ask your breeder what the coloring is of those puppies or of the puppy parents so that you know what your potential is. There are a lot of different colors out there that German short hairs can come in. Um, you can get your solid black or solid brown. You can also get a liver and roan, which is what ours are. You can get liver and white and lots of combinations in between. You can get the white and black. Um, you can get them a little bit more white, less speckled with a little bit of ticking. There's all sorts of combinations you can get, but typically you're gonna find solid black, solid brown, liver and roan, liver and white. Um, and then, like I said, variations of those in between. So if you have a preference for one of those tickings, then you'll wanna ask those questions to see if they have one available that you are looking for. Then question number six I'm gonna ask is, when will they be ready to come home? I need to make sure that I'm ready, that it fits into our timeline with what we have going on during that time. Um, when we got Bentley, it was November. And at the time, my husband's fishing season was pretty much over. He works from home, so I knew that he would be home with a puppy and be able to really tend to that puppy's needs, trying to teach it to pee outside instead of in the house. Then with our second dog, 
he came in June, which at the time I was a professor, so I was home for the summer. So I was then able to stay home with the puppy, teach that one how to go potty outside and do all those puppy things um, as they get used to living in a house versus living on a farm. So timing is really important, knowing when they'll be ready and when they can come home and make sure that your family and that you are ready to tend to those puppy needs and get them trained to live in a house. Then the seventh question I'm gonna ask is where are you located? I need to know where that breeder is located. And then I wanna know, do they deliver or do I have to come pick up? With Bentley, he was already, the breeder was already delivering a puppy to someone I believe in Nebraska and they were meeting them um, where we live in South Dakota. And so he was able to deliver Bentley to us at our home. But with Berkeley, he wasn't coming this direction. So we had to make the four or five hour trip to North Dakota in order to go get Berkeley and pick him up from their place. Um, so you'll wanna ask the questions again, cause you have to make the time. If you have to drive, when are you able to drive and go get them? When does it work in your schedule? When does it work in the breeder's schedule? Um, and so on. So you need to know where they're located. Lastly, if it matters to you, you're gonna wanna ask if that dog is registered. If it is registered, that basically just means that it meets the standards for personality traits, physical characteristics, temperaments, and so on of that specific breed. Being registered, unfortunately, does not guarantee that it's purebred. There are some that slip through the cracks. And you can also have a purebred short hair or other breed that is not registered. And that is the case with our two. Our oldest one, Bentley, came fully registered with all of the papers. He is a purebred German short haired pointer with papers to prove it. However, our younger one, while purebred, is not registered. And this is where I said why there was a cost difference. Bentley was $600 um, with papers and Berkeley was $300 with no papers. And it's a risk that we're taking by saying we hope that he's purebred. And if you look at him, you can tell that he's purebred. Um, but it was definitely a risk. And But I, I listened to the breeder and what he had to say as to why Berkeley has no papers. And the scenario that he had told us, if I remember it correctly, was the breeder's friend had one of his German short hairs and never got that dog registered. Um, just wasn't important to his friend. But his friend passed away. And part of honoring his friend was he wanted to breed his friend's dog with one of his dogs and to have puppies that would then live on. And so in this case, we got one of those puppies that had a registered mother and an unregistered father, I think. I could be wrong. Um, but in that case, we can't get papers if they're both uh, not registered. And for us, it didn't matter. We're not looking to create show dogs. We're not looking to create a long line of bred GSPs. We just want good family dogs that can hunt and are gonna do what we want them to do as an outdoor loving family. And if you've seen any of our videos, any of our photos, you know that our dogs are fully capable of doing all the things that we want them to do. And they look like purebred German short haired pointers and they act like it too. So hopefully these eight questions will help you get what you need out of your breeder for your next um, German short-haired pointer puppy. They are a lot of fun and they're a lot of work. If there's additional questions that you've asked that you wanted to know when you were seeking out your puppy, um, share them below. I would love to hear what you're doing and maybe that will help me with my next one should I ever venture into a third. <laughs> I hope everyone has a great week and I will see you next.